Dear learners, I am Christina Georgi, your academic counsellor for the MEG program. I welcome you to my session. For those who are attending this online, let me remind you that this session is specifically designed for the course code MEG01 which is titled British Poetry. Hence, the aspects discussed here will be solely based on the official study material for the same. And as per the requests of many of our learners, this session will be recorded by me so that this will aid you in your effective preparation of the upcoming TEE. We'll be having unit wide discussions towards the end of the session. We'll discuss the important questions from the entire blog as well. If interested, you may check out the playlist on MEG1. So, Shall we have a look at sonnets 19 and 23? What do you mean by a sonnet? Correct. 14 line poems. And how do you distinguish a sonnet from other types? That is, it would follow a strict rhyme scheme. Alright. You must have studied the various types of sonnets. How many types of sonnets are there? Ah, it's a very simple question. I would be happy if somebody could. Are you sure it's three? If so, which are they? Yes. Yes. Correct. Oh, I'm happy to see those answers. Basically, we'll say there are three types of sonnets. Basic types of sonnets. And you have answered it correctly. Spencerian, Petrarchan and the most familiar one Shakespearean I believe all of you must have studied at least one Shakespearean sonnet at some point of time in course of your language and literature studies okay so that would serve as an introduction to sonnets remember it is one of the most famous forms in English poetry the other forms include those that we studied like odes, then elegies, epics, etc. Oh. So, speaking about sonnets 19 and 23, uh, see, basically uh, it's written during the time that I mentioned uh, about his blindness, right? During my introductory session on Milton, we spoke about his blindness. So it was during that time that uh, we can set as a background for the sonnet 19. So the historians or the critics are not very sure about the date of publication. They say dates ranging from 1651 to 1655 have been suggested for both sonnet 19 and 23. But 1652 appears to be the best estimate. That is what is said. Milton often understated his age and predated several poems in the 1645 poems. It is said so. The reasons could be many. Do you have any guesses? Why would have he done so? Maybe he was anxious about his age and his personal attractiveness. It is said that he was anxious about vocational belatedness. Because by the year 1652, Milton was totally blind. I'll ask you a question. But do you think his blindness has actually affected his literary outputs? Do you think his blindness has in a way reduced his skills of writing poetry why is there silence obviously <laughs> you should be saying no because we have proof for that even this particular sonnet number 19 is written during this time and it is about his blindness that this poem is written so we can say this brilliant sonnet is proof enough that his talent has not been rendered useless by age and blindness not even age or blindness has have reduced his potential of being a poet. So, uh, a quick mention on sonnet number 19. Uh, this sonnet opens with the line 
when i consider how my light is spent sonnet 90 it would be great if you could remember this starting line when i consider how my light is spent you don't have to note this down because it is given in your textbook but then if you look at the study material you won't find it do you know the reason where should you find this line in your study material let me say whether you are answer or not where should you find this line in your study material the first line of sonnet 90 even if you haven't seen your study material so far you will be able to answer this if you have listened to me correct so smart of you ayana <laughs> yes good that you answered yes i'll accept the end answer but not just the end it's the end of this particular block okay towards the end of every block you can see an appendix okay i know most of you will not even look at that <laughs> but uh, ideally you should be having a look at that that is how you learn poetry yes so the ending of this poem is like they also serve who only stand and wait we can say this is an autobiographical poem why is this an autobiographical poem see the answers are very much easy that is why i'm asking you again it is said that sonnet 19 is autobiographical in nature can you guess the reason it's a straight answer it is very easy why is sonnet 19 autobiographical in nature i said this is about one particular aspect in his life correct okay yes so when you write about the sonnet try to write all these things that is the advantage of attending an online uh, counseling session there are people who are not attending the session so will they be able to know all these things no i hope they at least listen to the recording mm? yeah we can say this is an autobiographical poem that reflects on the loss of his eyesight whose eyesight milton's eyesight so he satisfies himself with the idea that virtuous thoughts and patient intentions are more important than actions okay that is something that you should keep in mind uh we have a quick mention on the structure of uh, the sonnets obviously it is a sonnet okay naturally you can write a few lines on the structure 14 line thing and all the basics you can write apart from that it is written in iambic pentameter a sonnet can be divided into an octave and sesset 8 plus 6 lines octave 8 sesset 6 and both the sonnets follow same kind of rhyme scheme okay but this is similar only in case of octave that is the first eight lines same rhyme scheme a b b a a b b a but the last six lines the sets of the two sonnets differ slightly that is sonnet 19 follows the same uh, the scheme c d e c d e sonnet 23 follows c d c d c d okay this keep that in mind that's a difference mm, uh, nevertheless another similarity is that both deals with milton's blindness even 23 also has references uh, to milton's blindness but the way in which the sense of blindness is experienced is different in each poem ha huh. here comes the similarity and difference the similarity is that 19 and 23 deals with his blindness true but there are differences in the way it is treated difference is there in the way the sense of blindness is experienced in each of these two poems so in sonnet 19 the blindness comes to represent for the poet a blindness of purpose in life since it suggests the inability to practice his craft a better explanation is given with respect to lines 3 to 6 and it is given there mm. it is said that the poet tries to derive consolation from humanity 
and uh, it takes a religious sentiment towards the end that is the octave uh, such a scheme is adored to in the progression of the poem itself lament of the poet takes up the octave octave uh, is more like a lament here and the argument against the lament follows in the sesset the first eight lines would be like a uh, lament and then the counter point would be the sesset so um, that's about 19 if you look at 23 remember you should write milton's sonnet 23 okay you should be very specific when you answer all right yes so sonnet 23 is more ambiguous like it's a mysterious sonnet the person who is object of which is not very clear that is the person the object of the sonnet is not very clear that is why they have used the term ambiguous but we can say the imagery in the sonnet is striking and its employment of light and dark visibility and invisibility are also um, notable Uh, we can say that the difference in the rhyme scheme of the sesets i told you octave the rhyme schemes are same but uh, the sesset i told you there is difference right so this difference draws your attention uh, to the difference in time and treatment of these two poems so if you look at page number 69 you can have detailed reading of these two poems make sure that you prepare a note of or at least you know the basic similarities and distinctions of these two poems and uh, uh yes keep that in mind okay yes so uh, in this unit we can say that we have explored the shorter poems of uh, milton we studied the relation between the twin poems the companion poems or the twin poems lalligro and il pensiero so and remember uh, to study the paradox there also thereafter we looked at the two sonnets right so if we look at an overview of block 4 as such remember we started off with a background to renaissance the late renaissance thereafter we positioned milton as one of the greatest poets of the late renaissance there we explored the life of milton that is his childhood his university life religion public political life and other poetic aspects of his career and it is then that we moved on to the lesser poems and prose of milton Remember we studied two poems there on the death of a fair infant and at a vacation exercise thereafter we looked at the influences bible the classical writers etc are influences and uh, thereafter we had an introduction to prose writings during um, the 15th century prose got into prominence the gutenberg press came by and uh, patronage was ceased uh, patronage was stopped maybe and um, all such um factors that contributed to the rise of prose we studied some major prose works and pamphlets of milton which are they of education areopagitica iconoclasts all these things we studied i suppose you also <laughs> studied if not make sure that you go you can't literally go home because you are at the comfort of your home okay you spend some time to read if possible make some notes reread and re-revise okay all right and where do you focus your prime attention towards units 20 and 22 so it is in unit 20 that we studied on the morning of christ's nativity and the pastoral elegy lycidas okay the first one is the nativity ode thereafter in this particular session we looked at the companion poems or the twin poems lalligro il penseroso and the two sonnets mentioned in your syllabus which are they sonnets 19 and 23 so 
This would conclude block 4 of MAG01 which is basically a study of John Milton. I hope I made it clear to you and I really hope the session was useful. Did you find the session useful? Glad. So I hope with considerable effort from your part you will be able to answer questions from this part. Are you confident? Yes. Uh, let me remind you that the last two units are very much important. Uh, it's late now so um, we'll deal with the questions, the previous questions for uh, this entire volume that is volume 2. Did you see my uh, video on volume 1 um, that is uh, blocks 1, 2, 3 the important questions? Uh, thank you for joining me today and I'm glad that you found the session interesting. Thank you so much. We will meet again for the next session. Thank you.